Kia ora, today I go back to Indiana Jones because I am very excited for the Great Circle that releases this December. This here is set 7623 The Temple Escape, which is based on the opening sequence from Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's a set that I managed to buy this year and one that I also said last year I didn't need anymore because I had this amazing thing. It's the Amazing Diorama Remake from 2023. These two sets are so massive next to each other that they can't even share the same display space, which is unfortunate because that's ultimately what led me to buying the older one. The set here released in 2008 for the price of 60 USD at the time, and I think it was around 100 NZD for us maybe. The set now in a sealed condition is valued at over 500 NZD or just $300 in a used condition. I managed to get mine for about $130 last month, a deal that is so good I thought I was being scammed. But can I just say, as someone who likes to make fun of the NZ aftermarket space frequently, this might be the best condition set I've ever been sold. 534 pieces in total and 6 minifigures, really 4 though, and 3 of them are exclusive here. And the set overview here is the opening sequence of the temple with all sorts of fun callbacks to the movie. We've got the boulder, we have an abyss, we have the darts room, and finally the golden fertility idol. Also, compared to the remake, the biggest change here is Jock's Plane, which is just a great case of showcasing how much LEGO have changed these days. While they make their remakes more carefully and well designed, they do strip away a lot of the character identity. Starting with that entrance then and making our way into the temple, we open with this really cool design of the temple door, complete with sticker designs and classic pieces that have since then been retired. I was initially really excited to see this, thinking it was a printed piece, but alas, it's a sticker. It's still cool though, we've got a skull there and some vines to help make that temple look abandoned. It's this section that I was mentioning that excited me the most. This skull here is a full piece that was only ever released in three sets. Castle, Pirates, and Indiana Jones. No wonder I'd never seen this before then. It was a really cool piece to discover and the set releases with two of them included. Inside the temple we have our first feature and some key details. A skeleton here stands where I believe Satipo meets his demise, as represented by a skeleton who essentially met the same fate. Balok stands there inside the temple where we have a Prince of Persia level play feature. These blades here can swing down and attack our heroes. You simply remove the Technic peg that holds them in place to let them go. A very simple gimmick and it works really well, uses those swords that the orc armies had in the castle themes. A good time now is to talk about the rather strange shaping that the set has. It features some bricks with some bends, so you'd think you could adjust it a little bit, but the parts here are locked in place, so the design has a crescent moon-like appearance. It's pretty tough to get in a display, and also something to be careful of because this thing's not as sturdy as one would hope with this kind of a design. The second skeleton here is sitting down, minding his own business, right next to the very cool moving door. If I remove the pole piece here, then you can see the sticker a bit better, which is used twice in this set. The door moves upwards and the side section here has some working gears and tooth bars to make the door go up and down. It's fully removable mind you, so to make things a little bit easier in case it gets stuck on something. And now we should take a look at the coolest part of the set. The wires here are used as track pieces for the boulder inclusion, the most famous scene from the film. The boulder in question here is literally just a ball included with the set. It's been hollowed out and it feels like a ping pong ball, it's pretty bouncy too, and apparently only ever released in this set. The ball rolls down these track parts here quite well, a little too well, sometimes though it can get caught on the plants there and I have to regularly double check that I've built everything correctly here, but the instructions do show it's all correct. It only lasts around 2 seconds which is pretty funny, but it's pretty cool overall, a very strange feature that's reminiscent of the earlier days of licensed Lego sets. I always wanted to play with the boulder feature when I was a kid and now here we are. Adjusting some parts here and actually moving the door upwards can hold the ball in place. Now it looks like a really great display model, and so then release the door will trigger the ball to react. Like most old features on older LEGO sets though, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It is what it is, you just have to play around a little and eventually you should get good results. This leads us to the next room where Satipo stands with his torch. At the back you can see the second wall featuring the idle sticker there. There's an empty space in the middle used to represent the abyss, and Indy can try swinging across from it from here. The set wants you to stretch out the whip and just fling him across that way. As for the darts trap, the floor has tiles used to represent the pressure plates, and once activated, the darts will fly out from the wall. A very simple gimmick, it's just spears that you hit with your hand. They can be loaded back into the wall because the bricks holding them are just simple Technic pieces. And now we get to the idle section of the build, which has a small display of these hands here for some details, and the idol is sat in the middle. Some great looking stickers here of bricks with wear and tear, and plant life sprawling around. 
and plenty of coins here are scattered across the ground too. The feature here involves removing the idol from the stand and hopefully that statue will fall down, but typical that it decides not to work as soon as we're filming. It's a lot less complicated than how the remake achieves this sort of thing, he just removed the peg and the roof will collapse there, and there's even some bricks included to resemble debris. The idol looks great and slightly different from the remake version, it's still the same moulding but the colouring has a slightly different tone. You can kinda see the function here down below, the techno pegs that go in and out cause the wall to collapse, and then the peg that the idol sits on is what holds everything in place here, easy thing to showcase and great to see. And that's the temple done, it's now time to take a look at Jock's plane inclusion. It's a really cool inclusion that was omitted from the remake release just last year. Jock in general back in 2008 feels like the type of inclusion that LEGO would just naturally have in their sets, which is funny because that type of representation is definitely a thing of the past nowadays. For what it is, I think the plane is actually a pretty decent inclusion. I love period piece settings in LEGO, and the plane still fits in with what they would have released across the city line back in the day. I've just always really liked that colour scheme of white and red, the sticker detail is nice as well, and the interior actually has his pet snake Reggie. It just feels cool to actually have this inclusion in person. I just never thought I would have this here, even if it is really just as simple as a plain inclusion. It's now time to take a look at our minifigures. These guys here are pretty cool, most of the named characters here are exclusive, and three of them would see remakes in 2023. Indiana Jones is first up here, and he is the exact same minifigure released across a whopping 15 sets in total. This guy here features the idol as the main difference between those other releases. I think I've talked about this guy far too many times on this channel before here, but for those unaware, the biggest key factors here were the hat, the bag, and the whip piece. Really cool parts that were first introduced in this theme, and they've stuck around ever since, appearing in many different colours across numerous different themes. Removing those extras here shows the torso detailing a little bit more clearly, and you can see that in 2008 we weren't quite there yet with back printing and side printing. This here is what Indy looks like alongside his remake, you can see the evolution here clear as day. I loved how the new one still mimics the exact same style though, the way that the printing here is presented, only the hat was really changed as far as those special parts go. Satipo's a strange one, it's a weird Alfred Molina likeness that just doesn't quite match to me. The face is used in other themes so it's just a general release here. It was last seen in the 2014 Ninja Turtles movie line. The torso remained exclusive though, and I do like those details on him here, but of course this is where the remake would shine. The pants remain the same, but there was more attention to detail here with the sweat because again, the design is incredibly similar and that's just great to see. It tells me that they really did nail it on day one. Also, interesting note here to make is that the original uses the outdated Harry Potter hairpiece, and the new one uses the, at the time, outdated Ron Weasley hairpiece. There was no back printing here for Satipo, which is something that they changed up with the newer figure, because he does feature some nasty creepy crawlies. Belloc here was most notable for featuring a rather smarmy expression that just makes him look very villainous. It's also crazy to have someone who allies with German soldiers of a certain era in minifigure form, complete with a gun and a helmet which is used to resemble a pith helmet, a piece that I never really thought worked all that well for that representation. His skin tone on the torso does not match the face, it's not even close really. The torso remained exclusive here, as it was his head that was reused in other sets, pretty much exclusively used for German or Russian soldiers in the Indiana Jones line, and once being used for Draco Malfoy, who is definitely who I thought the face originally belonged to. Compared to his modern day counterpart, it seems like he had a massive glow up to me. The colours on the new one are brighter and they're a bit more intriguing to me, and the face is different in its style as well. I think the biggest surprise here with the LEGO figures today is this attention of detail of having figures featuring sweat on their clothing. Jock here is the only figure that we cannot compare to a modern day iteration, he is very simple through and through. He has a fishing rod and a cool hat and some nice prints on the torso that help to make him feel individual. I say that because his torso is exclusive to this day. Amazingly that generic face apparently is also exclusive. As a Disney Parks fanboy it's also fun to have Jock here who would eventually land in Disney Springs and open his club. Then the two skeletons we have here are pretty standard inclusions, though apparently this type was only ever released in a handful of sets, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Exoforce. I'm not too sure what makes them limited like this because as far as I can tell, these are the same skeletons that I've built a hundred times over, but the more you know, it must be a combination of the parts here included. The instructions for the set come in two booklets, theming inside to make it look like an old map design, really cool to see, and the first booklet here builds the first half of the set, 
ending with an advertisement for some other releases. I guess this was what consisted of wave 1, I have almost every set here, just missing the German soldier battle pack there. Most of this page is dedicated to the set that we just bought though. The next booklet here covers the rest of the build, and then we close on a nice shot of what looks like the cover art and box art there. Then we have this two page spread of all of the main features and gimmicks, very helpful stuff to see when you've built the set a few weeks ago and you've forgotten everything that works here. The back is an advertisement of the game which did release in 2008, and the inventory list finally ending with the LEGO Club magazine and some winning products. Overall, despite having the better remake in my collection, I still loved building this. The features are really fun, and the data design just feels really cozy for me as a nostalgia trip. I absolutely adore the LEGO Indiana Jones line, it's currently my LEGO YouTube mission to collect all of the playsets that I missed as a kid, and if you'd be so kind in helping me with that goal, well you can by simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel to help support more videos like this one in the future. Kakiteano everyone, thank you very much for watching, take care, hope to see you all next time.